So the interview that I'm going to interview you about, we have no idea what we're going to talk about. No, never, but that's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. So, but we met in 2007, mm-hmm. and uh, that's a fact. <laughs> that is that much we know. We've established yeah. that. And we met, and there was a lot of cool guys in that group. And, uh, but ever since then, we hit it off, and we've worked together uh, all over the place, we've been, right? And we've worked together, we've done a lot of boot camps, we've uh, uh, filmed a lot of videos, we've written a lot of blogs. Um, I've done a lot of massage parlors. We've done a lot of massage parlors. Real ones, not weird ones, yeah, okay? In fact, today, we went to go get a massage, <laughs> oh, and we walked in the wrong door, and we walked right out. And found a better massage. Yeah, she was like fifty with like a uh, like a prom dress on. Yeah, prom that was dress cut. On, that was cut at the knees. She started grabbing David's butt. I try Sam. Oh, <laughs> you're like we're like foot massage. And I'm like David. We crazy. Oh, you're so that? strong. Doing a sequin dress and high heels for a foot massage. That's all they ever say is you're so strong. Yeah, you're so strong. Oh, you're so tight. You're so strong. Yeah, you're so tight. So tight. So tight. So tight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. You know. Whatever. All right. So. Okay. But yeah, we've done lots together. We've had a lot of uh, different girlfriends through the years. And oh, we uh, have. here we still are. And we've coached a lot of clients uh, the world over in that time and before. And the thing about it is, uh, you know, you have a really interesting past and you have a lot of insight into, you know, the human condition and, and into people's ability to make connections and to what prevents them from making connections. So I want to interview you about those things, about the human connection, the human, like, why are people, or so many people struggle to connect with others and have deep, meaningful relationships? And in this, what does it mean? What is a relationship nowadays? You know, is it all, is there any such thing anymore? So we're gonna get to that. Can I answer that? You want to answer, but I wanted to find out about these pictures you posted on Facebook back in 19 and Oh, 1980. No, no, no. let me ask that question first, yeah, then we can go back yeah, to the pictures, that. okay? Yeah. Because um, the answer is simple on mm-hmm. both counts. Mm-hmm. You know, until you know yourself, until you honor yourself, love yourself, be, be honest with yourself, commit to yourself to be the best person that you can be, right. you're not going to connect with anybody else on an right. authentic level. Because when you speak the truth to yourself, you're not afraid to speak the truth to others. You don't have what I call it words left on the table at the end of the day. The should have, would have, could have, you know? Right. You don't smoke hopium every single day. Mm. And you don't go home and go, I should have done this and I could have done this. But you didn't. And when you're honest with yourself and you know who you are, you, at the end of the day, will look at yourself and go, let me recap my day. And these are the amazing things I did today. You don't remember the things you didn't do. You remember the things you did do because life is just one big experience. So if you only remember the things you did do, you're able to share it and you're being authentic with yourself. There's always going to be, whether you're a man or a woman, somebody you didn't talk to. I mean, we were walking the streets the other night and there was this really, really naughty looking, sexy looking woman. Mm. And she slowed naughty down. Looking? Oh, she was so naughty. What does that mean? Though? Naughty. She just had all that sexual energy that was just yeah. unreal. You yeah. could just like see that little hitch. Like mischievous. She was mischievous and she curious. was curious. She was curious. She was a layup. She stopped, looked at her phone. She was looked, a layup? Yeah, layup, man. Just so fucking easy to go talk to, right? Oh, you I know? See what I'm and she was, you know, and like you could read all the signs, you mm-hmm. know, and like she had her phone in her hand and she was like looking around, wondering where the thing she was supposed to be at is at. Mm-hmm. But in reality, she wasn't even doing that before because if you watch it, she was walking behind us before she checked us out. Right. Once she checked us out, she grabbed her security blanket, her pass her iPhone pacifier and fucking started looking at it, right? So these are like the things, and I made a conscious choice not to talk to her, and that's something that I tell guys all the time. You made a conscious choice not to talk to somebody. Yeah, that's a great point. You made a conscious choice. I mean, you had a potential moment with somebody, you were looking for signs. You know, you don't even see, most people can't see the stuff we see because they're not trained. They're not trained to do this. When I was in my 20s, I used to smoke a joint. I used to walk the Upper West Side with my Walkman on, listening to Pink Floyd, U2, um, Tears for Fears, you know, Talking Heads, and I would just people watch. And I would mm. look for and read body language and read people. You know, I saw a movie, The Pickup Artist, Robert Downey Jr., and I was like, I'm going to be him. You know, I mean, it's like I emulated certain body languages certain people projected. I wasn't looking at what other people were doing. 
I was being what I want to be. And just by being what I want to be, people come into my life. And that's like, you know, you and I say this over and over again, but women literally throw themselves at us every single day. Why? Because the women that we want throw themselves at us because they recognize somebody who is worthy of them. Mm. When we see somebody who's insecure, a woman who's insecure, you know, we look and go, ugh, low vibrational, insecure, and we don't give them, we don't turn it on. Right. And that's what people don't understand. This is like level much deeper. And it, you know, if you're a man and you truly want to get deeper and really have what you want, it starts from within. You don't right. worry about things like, what did she do? What was the sign? What did she say? What do I need to say next? That's all like neurotic behavior from, it's, it's almost like a tick or an OCD behavior. It's a loop. I don't have a loop. I just go and I experience. So that, that was that was part one to the question. What was uh, the, the hold, other part? Yeah, I'm going to come back in a second. Okay. The top part was interesting. But it was interesting because one of the things you said, and it's the great, it's the most important thing that we, one of the most important things we share when you're meeting and connecting with people, meeting them originally and then connecting means to get to know them and actually feel, feel good energy between the two of you that you want to know each other more. It's all energy. And then there's levels of connection, how deep that can go, how, how connected you can become. But it all starts with your amazing powers of observation. And you talked about, and this is a very similar story to Marlon Brando. If you read about Marlon Brando, uh, arguably the greatest actor of all time, and he literally changed the world with his, I mean, changed the acting world and, and movie world with his acting. Yes, one man, go back and study it. And this guy, uh, what he did, he moved to New York from a farm in Nebraska and he used to sit in a cafe all day and just study I've people. Done that all day too. Look at them and study them, make observations about them, notice what they were wearing, what they were doing, look at their facial expression, what they were feeling, imagine who they were beyond, uh, be, you know, all with his imagination would make these observations and people watching. You just heard David. I used to put the music on and go out. And it, not only were you making observations about people, you were being inspired by it all. And so it's like tuning into the world. So this is like a magic happens. It's an actual magic with a K, like something supernatural happens. When you engage and you observe with the world and you tune in and you really look to see what, you really look to see the patterns of what, what it means the way people walk and they move and the colors that they decided to choose today and the facial expressions and what all this means. And when you look to be inspired, when you look to find a state of appreciation and you go walking down the street, you got the music on, inspiring you, you're both sides, your brain are working, you're totally radiantly alive in those moments. And that's what so many of the men that we work with, the yeah, women, the women. That women that we work with, the women that I see around in the streets they all day. It. In fact, you look at, and this is just an observation of mine, and this is definitely has no emotional charge in it, absolute observation. Most women, when they walk around, are completely unaware of their surroundings. And I notice more men, uh, including gay men, are more observant of their surroundings. Many men aren't, aren't aware of their surroundings either, don't get me wrong. But it's more like, for example, uh, just uh, that you, uh, you could almost bang into, you know, 20, 30 women and it, with, they're just completely out of it. They're not in the thing. Now, I'm just no, like, the woman, that, like the woman today. That, you know, by the way, my, my quote, my famous my quote that I live by is my life is a movie. No. My life is a movie. I'm the actor in my life. Mm. OK, that's how I live. Every day I believe my life is a movie. Mm. You know, that's why we notice such little things. And if we go back to that hotel today, like I know, like I noticed, like we both sat there and we noticed the girl taking a piece of cheese, taking a bite, touching her disgusting fingers and putting them into the cheese and taking another one. Oh, yeah, right. She fine. had a piece of cheese yeah. on her lip for like a minute or, or yeah. two. We were laughing. I mean, we and then she cleaned. Kind of filmed it, but yeah. And then she cleaned her boyfriend's earwax Ugh. with the finger that she was eating. Is that what she did? She literally... Okay. She literally did that. Then, then there was she, she, a... Then there was, John, this is what you said with all the women. This is what women do nowadays, right? Mm. This woman, the, she's struggling with a suitcase to get into this small New York City elevator in a hotel, and she had to be looking at her phone with her neck hunched down the entire time. Mm. And just watching that alone was quite comical because women are very checked out 
I, I always say it over and over again, a woman's security blanket or her pacifier or her milky baba, you know, if you really want to go down, is that phone. Women, I have never seen. Do you feel it's more women it's than men? It's more women than men. That's what it, I it, noticed. It, it's definitely more women. I, mean, I have some ideas of why that is. I mean, it's definitely a lot of men, too. I've walked around with very handsome men, and, they, and women are looking at them, tall, handsome men. The, the, uh, the women are men looking... Men are bad, too. I noticed because w- women, uh, you know, check in with me, but a guy who's taller and handsome always gets checked in with more. That's just a fact, right? So that doesn't mean shorter guys can't meet beautiful women or have to It struggle. doesn't matter. It's no, it does. I'm just saying people notice, you know, you get noticed, right? It's attitude. So, but these guys, so let's say he's short and handsome, whatever, he's magnetic. The point is they don't even notice people are looking at him. They don't even notice what's happening. They don't even notice what's going around them. Once in a while, they see a girl and they'll just go, oh my God, and then they'll be like, go back into their head. And, that, and then that's it. But, uh, so there's so many people that, are, and then they're not, there are, and I think these people are afraid to be present. I think they're afraid to be now. They've tuned out, they've checked out, they've, they're, they, they think we live in Disneyland, everything's safe, nothing's gonna happen. Oh, they don't yeah, have to be, amazing. Yeah, they don't have to be uh, pr- this present. And to be present, you know, if you're really present, you have to go through a layer of experiencing like, oh, fears and, you know, you have to, you know, you, you, there's things going on that you, you're, you may be afraid to deal with. But then when you get past that layer and you're really present, then you're just here. You're out here. You're seeing, well, you're seeing everything around you, you're seeing things that you ne- even though you walked on the street every day and you, you never look up, you never look at what's going on in the buildings. You never notice even the architecture. There's so many things so going many around things. you cannot see. You know, you know, it's funny, it's like you get to an elevator now, and it used to be you get into an elevator and everybody was staring at the buttons. And mm. I remember, like, you know, at the beginning of my teaching people how to date, there was none of this fucking smartphone bullshit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody was staring at their clamshell phones, right? Mm. And when I used to get, I used to always have, like, what I call the elevator opener. You get an elevator, and everybody would immediately look at the, uh, the numbers, right? And mm. my joke was always like, all right, let me guess what everybody's doing right now, counting. Isn't that wonderful? This is like preschool. One, let's do it together. One, two, three, right? And people would crack up and laugh and it would break the ice because people are so afraid to connect with somebody yet they crave the connection. So they do anything they can not to connect. Nowadays, you know, it's, you go into an elevator and everybody's head is down, Right. you know, and they're all looking at, at the most ridiculous things. And I'm not anti-phone. Look, I mean, it's great. I can run my business off the phone and I can email and get back to people, but I'm not tied to my phone or tethered to my phone. And, and so many people all the time, and this is where it gets really, where things have changed so much, is that you know, you'll get neurotic emails from clients and go, I don't understand, they haven't texted me back in like 24 hours. And that, you know, the reason why people say that is because all we see is people on their phone all the time. Mm. So when we text somebody, we think to ourselves, what's wrong with me? Because I know they're looking at their phone. Why are they not getting back to me? Right. And it, it breeds a new form of insecurity in people. People are already insecure already. But I mean, that is one of my top 10 emails that come in on a regular basis is, what do you think this means? They didn't get back to me. It took them 10 hours to get back to me. And I think to myself, well, maybe they have a life. Right. It's you know, maybe they're actually living. Maybe they're not tethered to the phone. Mm. Maybe they're not, you know, uh, staring at it at all times. You see people in public stare at it because they're so afraid in public because it's a security blanket. But in privacy, right. they probably have other things they're probably doing. Right. Now, it all goes back to connection. And when we're talking about being aware and observing, you're talking about uh, being aware of your surrounding. And, and you started with being self-accepting, self-aware, self-evolving. Yeah. And then, 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 you know, so then we we're just talking about connecting with other people, you know, like, so taking it in, you know, taking it out, we're talking about, now we're talking about meeting other people. But when it comes down to really getting to know and connecting with people, what does it mean? What does it take? What, what you know, what's, what's, and, and then the third level was that was, just, you know, getting to know people, having relationships with them. Is, is there, is there such word, a thing anymore? One word, one word for the first one, curiosity. Yeah. Mm. Man, I look at everything as like, life is one giant treasure hunt, and every single person is there to deliver me a secret message. Wow. So I make it fun, you know, and and that's what I do when I coach somebody. I even say the same thing. Let's just go out and find many secret messages today. Mm. Life has many secret messages. 
As for relationships, relationships are truly defined by what you want mm -hmm. and what you desire, not what your programming is. Not, you know, you're a New Yorker, you're Jewish, you got to marry a Jewish girl, or you're Vedish media, your grandmother's going to be pissed, your mother's going to be pissed, your dad's going to be upset. I mean, it's like, you know, to me, a relationship is defined by your experiences you've had with yourself and other people. Mm. Which means the first thing always comes down to is not anything. I've had great relationships. I love them all. Have all of them been wonderful? No, a lot of them have been great learning lessons and everything else. I have no animosity towards any of them at all because they all delivered exactly what they needed to deliver at that point in my life that I needed it. I also don't look at it as a relationship as permanent. A relationship it is with self, minute by minute, second by second. You can't promise anybody the future. The future doesn't exist. So how are you promising something that is not even there right now? Everybody wants to go, and a lot of women especially, and men too, they want to meet the one. Well, life has been a series of ones. If you mm. look at everybody you've ever been with, they were the one for you at that moment. So the one you're with right now is the one. I can't promise it's going to be the one forever because forever doesn't exist. We only exist in the now. So a relationship is truly defined by where you're at and who you are and what you want. And a lot of people don't know that. They don't even know their own blueprint. They don't even know what makes them happy. You know, they all say, everybody has the same cliches. I want, I want good sex. I want someone who's affectionate. <laughs> I want somebody who's a good conversationalist. Meanwhile, you're not the best conversationalist. Yeah. You suck in bed. And good sex is a different definition because everybody has a unique version of good sex. Like my version of good sex is different than yours. So I want to be with somebody who aligns with me. My definition of affection is way different than some of the women I've been with, right? Mm. So the fact is we were not a match. So it starts with the relationship with who you are, yourself. The only person, the only soulmate you have in life is yourself. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. the truth. It's like you have soul connections, like we're soul brothers. Yeah. You know, there's a soul connection between friends, you know? Yeah. And it's like interesting if you pick your best friends. Like I have a couple of best friends. I got John, I got Greg, I got Brett, and uh, my friend Brian, who I you know I've known for years. And then I have a lot of other I have some good friends underneath yeah. that level right? right but there's you know you're probably the only one I can hang out with for like five straight days I mean right. I, most people two days right yeah right. at the most but you and I can hang John and I can hang out for like 10 days and it's no fucking problem at yeah, all yeah, we're, we're, we find a flow we're, we you know we say yes to life and then we go out and explore we're both curious we're both adventurous it's um, easy we both love to go out and observe we both, we love to go out and connect uh, and just talk we also know when to chill yeah and just talk and shoot the shit and, and like act like little kids like wow look right. at that building oh my god that's 19 wow I never saw that sign on top of that building imagine yeah. that person living there we create stories all day long and we mm. have fun with that and that's the beauty but we can do that because both of us are our own best friends we love ourselves we're our own lovers we're not yeah. needy at all we don't have any needy stuff my life is not a Jerry Maguire story. You complete me, I complete me. Mm. And that's what I think people don't understand. So when, when, I, when I work with somebody and I, I listen to them and I say to them, you know, it's like a relationship with yourself is what we need to work on first. Truly loving yourself, truly admiring yourself, truly knowing who you are, truly being your best friend, being able to travel, being able to stand alone in an elevator without your iPhone, being able to engage somebody, smile, and talk, being able to have conversations, be able to state what you want and not hold back and to live that unfiltered, beautiful life, that's how you do it. Otherwise, you're having these half-ass relationships mm -hmm. that aren't authentic because you're not authentic with you. Well, I think, you know, we should do another interview sometime. Oh, yeah, they're good. I got like 50 and more 1,000 questions, but this interview very specifically turned into really about the most important thing people are looking for in their lives, in every stage of their lives, in every day of their life, is connection. Connection to themselves, and really finding that self-acceptance, that self-love, that self-appreciation, and, 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 and feeling good about being me, and then connecting to their environment, you know, connecting to the now by being an observant, curious person, and connecting with other people, 
uh, friends and lovers both and understanding, you know, and in that, and in all those answers also is like, hey, remove all the expectation. Remove all, this way you can remove all the resentment from your life. Remove all the expectation for what should be, you know? Get, let's get rid of that and really look at what these journeys of relationships are. Now, some people are in relationships for 170 years, and that's, you know, with one person, and they grow together. And this was something uh, my old acting teacher used to say, Sidney K, the RIP. He used to say, uh, you either grow together or you grow apart. And some people growing together all the time, and that's not easy, because most people do grow apart, and then maybe you'll grow back together, maybe you won't. But some people are, you know, have that have that kind of relationship that they do that. But if some, but if if you don't at this time, if you haven't found someone to do that with, it's all great. Everyone here is our teacher. Everyone here you are learning from, and 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 you are growing from. Unless you choose to fall into the under the negative weight of it, like some people do. You know, they 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 collapse under a breakup and they become hardened and uh, and old. Whereas it's an opportunity for you to sh- to let to learn the great art of letting go, letting go of uh, what you th- your 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 dream, your illusion, letting go of all the negativity and resentment, letting go of that, and discovering yourself anew yet again. Yeah, that's a good good way to live. Yeah, you know, because you're new every day. You really are, and you really can be, and you can make the choice to be, and and a lot it's about, you know, I think making new. Um, T- taking a right instead of a left every day and trying something new. So, you know, there is no the direct, other, there is no direction to go. on the other side of the bed tonight. Yeah. You know, wake up on the other side of the bed. Start, this is, so it creates a new momentum. But there's there another story. It's now. another story, there, but there is no direction. That's what I love about New York is yeah. that I used to always say that all the time. I remember when I was, you know, in the 80s and 90s when I was living here, you know, I would, on a Saturday or any day I had off, I would just leave my apartment on 80th and Amsterdam or 97th and West End or 23rd and Lex or 28th and Park and go, if I go right, there's a whole different adventure waiting me. Mm. If I go left, there's a different group of people and a different wow. adventure. So at every street corner in New York, I used to always say, what direction do I need to go now? And I allowed myself just to move with that direction because I knew that no matter what direction I picked, there was a connection and there was an adventure and a story to be had. Mm. And that's a great way to look at life because it doesn't matter where you are because wherever you are, there's a story waiting to happen. The story of you and the story of somebody else and the story of your life. And if you think about it, no matter where you live, if you walk and run your errands or whatever it is, it's like it doesn't matter where you go. You're about to head into the next scene in your movie called your life, the next chapter, the next story that you're going to experience. So think of it that way, reframe it, and you'll actually enjoy it and put your phone down when you do that because then you can't be fully engrossed when you're allowing energy from other people to get into your life. So don't look at social media feeds. Don't look at Instagram. Don't look at any of this stuff. Don't allow other people's thoughts their venting, their frustration, their life. I don't read Facebook that often, but when I do, it's like depressing. It's like, it's like a bunch of older people who fucking post like sad stories about their shit. Like there's always an underlying there's current. An angry thing. Right. There's always an underlying shit. Right. There's yeah. always an underlying current of like something they're lacking. Mm. You know, and they're trying to get an opinion from other people. You know, and the fact of the matter is. I don't want an opinion from the masses. When I go and I seek answers, I go to people who are wiser than me. I go to a coach, I go to my friends. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I trust my own instincts and I seek answers for myself. It's amazing. One of the things I wanted to talk about for a second was, or just kind of um, reinforce, was when David said he would go to, uh, if I go this way, I'm gonna gonna meet people. If I go this way, uh, there's gonna be a new adventure. He wasn't just walking with his headphones on and his head down. He mm-hmm. was walking in and he was ready and available for life and, and, and ready to play his part when an opportunity presented itself. 
for him to be curious and explore and to meet someone new and to meet new people and to uh, you know to to fall in love. He was open to it all to fall in love. Oh my god, my whole twenties was about. Are you fall kidding me? Oh last my night. god, I watched the movie about last night. Yeah, Demi Moore. Oh, Rob like, yeah, Lowe. Right? Man, yeah. the minute I watched that movie, I just wanted to move girls into my house and live with them. So literally every girl I dated for two weeks, I go, hey, let's move in together. I would move girls in it after two weeks. Oh, come on, really? Oh, yeah, I did so many of them. Let's see, Carolyn Di Pasquale, yeah. hot Italian blonde. Yeah. We called her Thumb because she had those, like, um, thumbs that looked like somebody hammered them down. Oh, man. Remember did those? You, Ellen you, Thumbs. Who called her Thumb Did she know you called her Thumb No, no, my brother and I called oh, her Thumb But, like, okay. if you look, Google Ellen, uh, Ellen DeGeneres Thumbs. Oh, really? And she has Ellen DeGeneres Thumbs. Her name was Thumby. She broke up with me after a couple of, like, months because... I decided to smoke a joint my first night. I told you that story. You know, my first night I was I was hosting oh, right. a restaurant, right? And this girl invited me up to smoke weed. And I was like, this is a fun job, man. I'm gonna go up there. And I smoked weed and she had like panties on and a long shirt. And man, she was coming on to me strong. And I go, oh, man, I, I, I'm living with somebody. I love my girlfriend. And I told her and then she broke up me. Then like a week later, I asked her to marry me in front of the Empire State Building because I was so romantic. And she said no. And then, you know, then I cried. Then I was tearing up and got on the subway. I, I love this story because I told you yesterday. I got on the subway on 14th Street, this redhead, sexy older redhead sat down next to me and she was by the 72nd Street, she was tired of tears. She was rubbing my head and she was wanting to just come home with me. I'll make you food. And I basically, she basically seduced me for three days and let me leave her apartment. Wow. And it was such a great experience and she healed me. I don't remember her name. I don't remember a thing. I remember she had like very pale skin and beautiful blue eyes and great little breasts and a great ass. And I just remember like her energy, man. She was like this healing being. And by the, and then Carolyn called me like a week later, and, you know, we got together at 34th street after work and she wore her hair nice. And she goes, you know, she goes, you look great. She goes, you look happy and fine. I go, oh, I'm good. I really think we should try again. I go, no, 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 I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was healed, man. I was like, I was off to the races. When I left that woman's apartment, like on 73rd, I think she lived in, and I think in like 73rd, like, I think it was Riverside. Oh, really? Yeah. Man, I, I like, after, after submerging from a three-day heel fuck fest, I was like, <laughs> I was ready to conquer Manhattan. Wow. Until I moved somebody else in. You know, I just kept moving them in, man. Just moving them in. That was me in my 20s. I was either single and having sex with every girl that I could or uh, moving them in. Wow. Yeah, that was that was New York. And it's funny, when we got that body work tonight, I was having, like, flashbacks of, like, this Minnesota girl that came into the Bear Bar. Yeah. I don't remember her name, but she had the most ice blue eyes. She looked like, like a Bar on Amsterdam? On, Bro on Broadway, yeah. On Broadway, because I used to live on the Broadway side. Yeah, I mean, that's closed now. Right? Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. But it, was, it wasn't only a couple years ago, closed. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. She had these ice blue eyes like a husky. She had a face that you, you just, it was like chiseled from like clay. I mean, she was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I, she was a little wide for me, you know, because yeah. uh, I was such a weightlifter picky motherfucker right but yeah. there's nothing wrong with her body I just like them a little I like them thinner you know it's yeah. just the body type that I like and oh my god we had sex she would wait for me at the bar at the at the bar we'd have sex on her boat she lived on a houseboat on the Hudson and when the Hudson when Riverside Park was kind of eh, it's kind of sketchy right yeah you know the 80s right late yeah, 80s it was okay. like you know, she was this hot chick walking all the way to the fucking, to the boat dock on the Hudson off of Riverside Park. It was sketchy, but I remember sleeping on the boat with her and I remember the sound of it. And I was thinking about that. I have flashbacks sometimes when I get massages in Manhattan to stay awake. I get flashbacks of all the experiences I've had here. Yeah, that's you know, a great story. It, this, mean, well, this city is just one well, that's big, something beautiful I really, experience. You know, I, I, that's one of the interviews I really wanted to get into uh, is you know, hearing all about those stories, but we got some nice ones today. But you have a lot. You have a well of good stories from other times, and you know, and then L.A. in the '90s. We want to hear about that. And well, L.A. Yeah. and then New York, and then coming here, you convincing me, right, John, that like I might as well have a girlfriend in New York and one in L.A. Yeah. So right. I did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I was dating like I was always dating somebody back in New York, you know, and like I was keeping the. I was keeping the fire going. Yeah. You know, no matter what, the fire was always going with somebody. Yeah. And then today, you know, we ran into somebody and I was just like, man, why didn't I, 
Yeah. Why did I pursue that a little bit more? You? Man? She, you know, she was such a beautiful girl, you beautiful, know. Beautiful, 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 beautiful yeah, woman, you know. You, really. you know, then there was famous women. Mm. You know, you know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yes, I do. Right? Very you know? famous. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, and like my friend couldn't believe, like, uh, I was date. you know, I was going out with her. He goes, man, he goes, she's the most mystifying woman I've ever met in my life. And he wow. goes, and she's, you're going out with her? He goes, man, he goes, he goes, I love you, man. <laughs> because it's like I just can't believe. When we met her in the Hugh Kitchen. Hugh Kitchen. When we met her in a, in a you know, in a, in a mm. organic restaurant. Like we're, we always meet people where we're at. That's the thing. Everybody she was we so know. So seductive. Everybody we know, we met her in real life. Yeah, she was so seductive. Yeah. I mean, just she was. so right. intoxicating. Mm. Like really intoxicating. I remember making out with her on. Uh, you know, she, we took it slow, right? Mm. I remember making out with her outside her building and like. People were just honking horns and just watching, you know. Oh, was, really? Because she's so... Very like, womanly. Very, very feminine. Very uh, elegant. Yeah. Very tasty. There was yeah. just this... Tasty or tasteful? Tasty. You know, there's there, there's women that you make out with... Tasty. Women you make out with, you can taste their soul. Oh. You know? And then there's other ones that you just yeah. feel like they're windshield wipers. Yeah. You know, it's just the tongue goes... Bleh. Right, you know, it's almost yeah. like it's almost like you know those new modern windshield wipers, yeah. right? That like they they on the Mercedes and the Volvo and the BMW, I've always had them, right? Where like a sprinkle of rain comes and then they go across like really slow. Yeah. I hate people that kiss like that. Yeah, oh, no, but worst. that's interesting. I can taste your soul. Oh yeah, but I like that. That's a good slang. Is that like a slang? You're tasty. She's yeah. tasty, man. Sounds like a, a Beastie Boy song. You tasty. Nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like that. tasty. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah, it makes me nice. think about her. You know, yeah. she was really nice. tasty. Yeah. Yeah, I really... I was like... And, and it's funny, too. There were a lot of women that... Um, to all the girls I've loved before. It's true. No, there were women that would go <laughs> down on that. That, that, that were like that, too. My door. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, were like right. really... Like, I swear to God, there were some women, I swear, like, I would go down, they would orgasm so hard, I would look at them and go, I'm just tasting, I'm taking your soul in. Wow. I mean, it was like... There, Let's talk about connection. Yeah, there talk was about layers, some, layers yeah. and levels of connecting, you know. It was like drinking their sacred fucking juice, and it was like the juice of their goddess and their soul. Wow. I mean, th there was some... I've had some just amazing experiences incredible like, isn't that what life's about yeah like I, mean, I, I, I love all wow this. wow I mean listen to this when you listen to it you have to ask yourself am I living my life as fully as I can am I ex having amazing experiences am I experiencing this life and if I feel like you know I'm not uh, experiencing as fully as I can what do we do then you get honest with yourself mm. you know it's a journey so it's never too late to get on the road. And it's never too late. I look at life like a highway. You know, it's like a cross-country trip. You just can keep going back and forth. Back. I mean, it's like literally what I do. L.A., New York, L.A., New York. It's like back and forth, back and forth. And you look at it and say to yourself, you know, this is what I want. And you write it down. Mm. And you write it down and you record it. Or you hire me and I'll record it for you and put it to music, but you record it and you listen to it a hundred times and you reprogram your brain. So you get rid of the I can'ts to the I am's. You get rid of the, from the, I don't know if I can to I will. You get into the I deserve this to, I don't know if I, de you know, instead of I don't know if I deserve this. So you have to really literally reprogram your subconscious mind and you have to allow your conscious mind to reprogram your con uh, subconscious mind. And mm -hmm. everything is there. I mean, like anything, like, I visualize everything. Like, I visualize, like, you know, I told you, you know, with trading, how I'm visualizing that life to be. I mean, that life is, you got freedom now, but wow, man, when I get to that point where I need to go to, the freedom is going to be even more intense because it's going to allow me to do the next things that I want to do. I want to do stand-up. Oh, that's great. You know, we could do that now. No, nah, I want to do it. When, there, there's things I need to accomplish first. Yeah. And there's a reason. I'm, I'm very goal oriented I don't like to... I don't, you, I don't want to overwhelm myself with things to do. I want to do stand-up with you. Oh, yeah, we got to do it now. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Have to write the, you, have to write the, you have to write the app. No, we're all improv. Oh, we just do improv stand-up. Yeah, we oh, do improv. Do we're too good we'll do it not tonight. to. Let's do it tonight. Yeah, we're too improv. You yeah, know? Right. I mean, it's actually really, a great idea. But that's what I want to do, and that's, we'll do that together. We'll set that intent. 
But it's like, it's so important. This is something that I think people get overwhelmed. They have a to-do list, they have too many goals, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you gotta really, you gotta really prioritize yourself. So right now I'm prioritizing, I want more freedom. So more freedom means, that's the reason why I like, you know, I'm learning how to trade the stock market is because I can just pull money every single day from the market, that's freedom. So I want that freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And then with that freedom, with more, even more financial freedom than I have right now, right? I want to do the creative things that you and I have talked about for a long, long time. We can do our little two-man show. You know, we can talk about the stuff we want to talk about. It gives us that sense of freedom to be able to do that. And I believe life is like a stepping stone. It's like accomplish one thing and you're even more powerful than you are. But when you, you spread yourself into too many, too many things, that's what human beings do now. They're like, I'm trying to lose weight and, and I'm trying to quit smoking and I'm trying to start a new job and I'm trying to start a business and, and, and I'm trying to be a soccer coach and, and I work full time. I mean, mm. fuck, you can't do any of all that stuff. So just do one thing, concentrate on it, be amazing at it. And then once you're great at it, you're not putting in the time you were putting in before and then you can add something to it. People overwhelm themselves way too much. That's so great. Well, I think we got just a little bit about the battery's gonna die in this camera, so. Anything else you wanna add here? I think no, you're doing a nice no, interview, this right? This is good. I think we should do more interviews like this, honestly. This is good. This is like, it's like soul. It's like makes me feel like, what do I want next? Mm. You know, what yeah. do I want to experience tomorrow? Mm. You know, that's what always happens when I come to New York. It's like, what do I want to experience? Yeah. The only thing that I'm bummed about, I did not get those sneakers at 30% <laughs> off. I know. It's like the Jew in me is like, I'm like, man, I just love I getting that deal, know. you know? But I got I to know. go to that cool fish store today, so in Chinatown, so that was... That was cool. That was worth know? it. That yeah, was old school, man. Maybe I'll grab them for you next time my friends with me gets 30%. Oh, 11 and a half in those, though. You want me to just get them and Just hold get them for me. Just, just get them. Hold them for you? Yeah, just get them and hold them. We'll get them in Yeah, the which one, well, these, we're looking like 10 different ones. I forget which one. I want those New Balance, the white with the green. Oh, okay, I know which one. So an 11 and a half. Yeah. I love your question. You know, what do I want to experience today? What do I experience tomorrow? Like, that, that is such a great... Like, you're brand new. Everything's new. What do I want to experience now? Like, we all get so stuck in our goals and what, you know, we get stuck in the identity that we created for ourselves. Did you know you don't have to do any of it? Did you know you could stop right now and just start anew? Did you know that if you feel like being a stand-up comedian now, you can start working on that right now? You don't have to be, oh, you don't have to think about what other people did or who, who you know, how other people's lives unfolded or, or you know, well, I'm doing this thing now. If you don't want, if you want to do something new, experience it now. I mean, really, and, and it's so important to talk, have friends, like David and I are friends, and we're, we're the kind of friends that can allow ourselves to easily uh, and, and, and nurture and support our, our, our friends to easily go in and, and become even better. Easily go and try these new things. There's so much awesome things to do in life. In fact, uh, he and I are both very funny and we both would, uh, you know, make great stand-up comedians. And oh, now, you now I show. think we should challenge each other to write a, one, uh, one set. Then you have to write a set or something? No, you and I just need to outline it. Yeah, that's what I mean. We just need to outline it. We just need to outline it. So why don't we challenge ourselves to outline it? All I, right. I think we could have done it today. We could have had the cheese girl eating the cheese on her face. Did we talk about <laughs> so that? Gross. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so it, there's so much fun stuff. It is cheese great. girl. We could have had... The could, guy struggling with the grapes, and then he finally... Get, and then he realized, because he was Asian, and they're much more... Much better mannered than so many other cultures. And instead of like putting the grapes that he was ripping and holding on to, he took the whole thing. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. And then he looked at us and then he smiled like he was he, like. <sighs> Whereas, wait, the other girl. No, the Asian guy was super cool with it. Yeah, and then like, the yeah. other girl was like, you know, she was, she was, eat, gra you know, she was grabbing. Asian it, cultures are, are very fingers. Oh, and that was gross. Going back, you know, we're talking about all these open buffets, you know, and then grabbing the food with our hands, even though there was clearly like a spoon there to pick it up. And then she picked the earwax, you know, so there's something that, but then there was also, you know, well, that's how they get the, the color of the cheddar, Chinese massage and, oh. and, you know, and then all of a sudden we're almost getting a reach around. I mean, there's a lot of humor around us all the time. So anyway, uh, should we wrap this one up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Yeah, it was really great uh, talking uh, with you and uh, I'm looking forward to our next meeting, which will be hopefully soon, you know, we get to New York more. I've been out to LA in a while, so. Um, Later on in June. 
Later on in June. I may be in Europe, but I'll, I'll let you know. We're going to be coaching over there. Yeah, you can't be in Europe at that time. Well, I love are you me. leaving? I'm leaving uh, in, in a week or 10 days. I'm leaving to Europe. And then uh, I've definitely got three weeks of coaching. And then, I, then there's, you know, I like, you know, I'm over there. There's a whole world to see. So I may stay for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, there's time. a whole world. You're already there. The whole world. Ah, oh, that yeah. sucks. Yeah. But I'll let you know. All right. All, All right. right. Uh, John Keegan, The Awakened Lifestyle, here with David Wygant of davidwygant.com. Check out his stuff. He has so many amazing mindsets and uh, skills and life-changing... What do you say? Life-changing what? How do you say that? Programs. Life-changing programs. Coaches. To coach you through. And we will see you soon. John Keegan.